I feel greatly honored to have the opportunity to attend the business forum between Tanzania and South Africa for the second time. As you all may recall, on 11th May 2017, at this very place, I and the former president of South Africa, His Excellency Jacob Zuma, had the privilege to attend another business forum between our two countries. Indeed, these two business fora demonstrate our resolve for a deeper economic cooperation between our two brother nations. Before I proceed with my remark, allow me on behalf of the government and the people of the United Republic of Tanzania to once again extend a very warm welcome to your Excellency and my dear brother, President Lamafosa. I also commend you for your decision to come with this higher level business delegation. In this regards, I would also like warmly welcome my brothers and sisters from the South African business community who have come to meet their Tanzanian counterparts in order to discuss and explore business opportunities between our two countries. Kindly feel at home, for indeed Tanzania is your second home. <clears throat> your Excellency President Lamaphosa, distinguished participants, this business forum, it comes at a point when our two nations are fully committed to the feathers of our economic cooperation. It is an evidence fact that in the past, our nations were brought together by struggle for political liberations against apartheid. However, since the return of the majority rule in South Africa, our nations are now directing their attention towards economic liberations. In my humble opinion, this must constitute any overlanking missions, not only for two nations, but for the whole of Africa. This is important because even our political liberation will make no sense if this mission remains unaccomplished. For we shall remain dependent on economic power for nations. Therefore, as a friend and brother nations, we must direct our effort towards economic liberations. That is only directions left ahead of us, and we have no other choice. As such, this business forum must bring us together in a view to diverging on implementation concrete strategies for a more profound cooperation in the domain of trade and investment. Indeed, our shared history has taught us to work closely. Let us continue in the same directions. Your Excellency President Ramaphosa, honorable readers, distinguished participants, South Africa is our major economic and business partner. Statistics can attest to this fact. In 2018, the volume of trade between our nations amounted to 1,108.2 million US dollars, where Tanzania imported goods and services with 437.2 million US dollars being an increase by 5.3% compared to 515.152 billion US dollar in 2017. On the other hand, the export value from Tanzania to South Africa accounted for US dollar 743.02 million in 2018 being an increase by 6.8% compared to USA dollar 699.791 million in 2017. 
based on this statistics, South Africa ranks second among the reading country destinations of Tanzania's export with a 16.7% share of all our export commodities. In the same vein, more than 70% of all Tanzanians export to SADC go to South Africa. The main exports from Tanzania to South Africa include minerals, especially gold, cotton, tea, tobacco, wheat flour, simsim, coffee, cereals, spices from Zanzibar, fruits, and vegetables. On the other hand, Tanzanians' major imports include various types of machineries, electric equipment, beverage, sugar, rubber, cosmetic, detergents, vehicle, plastic, and transportation equipment. Apart from that, South Africa has a total of 228 investment projects in Tanzania, with USA dollar 806.05 million, availing 21,075 employment opportunities, making it the 13th largest investors in Tanzania. A quick assessment of the few statistics that I have just presented, at least to the strength of our cooperations in trade and investment, and that this cooperation has been growing year after year. Furthermore, the balance of trade between our nations is yet another indicator of our close cooperations. Certainly, these achievements are ascribed to our long-standing diplomatic political and economic ties. Despite this achievement, a lot of trade and investment potentials remain unexploited. In fact, if we fully utilize all the available opportunities, our bilateral trade and investment cooperation would attain a new and unprecedented height. The industrial sector presents a major investment opportunity which is full aligned with the visions of the current 51st government. It is a fact that in our country, the level of production of manufactured goods is still very low. And so, is it contributions to the nation's gross product, GDP, it is actually less than 15%. Therefore, as a nation, we are determined to promote the manufacturing sector by encouraging the establishments of industries that add value to our products with a view to cutting down the amount of primary goods exported out of our country and the finished goods imported from abroad. We want fabric and textile from our cotton to process meat. Actually, Tanzania is the second largest amount of animals after Ethiopia to fabricate leather materials using our livestock to process fish from our ocean, lakes, rivers and the ponds to produce sugar and edible oil using our locally available produce and etc. Our ultimate goal is to reach a stage where we can process all our primary goods and eventually abandon the current practice of exporting raw material from our country. Exporting raw material means you are also exporting job. In line with this above argument, I recognize that South Africa is one of the major buyers of minerals and the precious stones from Tanzania. We invite you to build the mineral smelters and the refineries in order to add value to the mineral product prior to the exportations. I'm certain that you have the necessary technology and the donors are open for invest the door are open for investment in this area. And I'm really assuring you the door is open 
then they will continue to be open for this area. Of particular importance is that the issue of investment in pharmaceutical industries. Our country, and I believe this is the case with the other SADC countries, spend a lot of foreign exchange for importations of medical supplies. I have mentioned this during our discussion with President Lamaphosa. This is due to lack of pharmaceutical industries. At present, our medical stores department has been given the mandate by the Global Fund to procure medical supplies for all SADC member countries. It is, however, unfortunate that 94% of the medical supplies are imported from abroad. We have failed to fully utilize this opportunity due to industrial backwardness. We thus invite all serious investors from South Africa to invest in the industrial sector, including the pharmaceutical industries. Our major focus resides on industries that utilize the locally available primary goods. It goes without saying that South Africa is far more advanced in terms of industrial technology compared to many African countries. So the room is there for you. It is therefore important and useful to share experiences and they utilize the available technology to develop the industrial sector in Africa, and more so in the SADC sub-regions. Your Excellency, President Lamaphosa, ladies and gentlemen, tourism is another area with huge investment potentials. For those who might not be aware, Tanzania ranks second in the world in terms of number of tourist attractions behind Brazil. However, these attractions have not been developed and fully utilized to contribute the light of share to the GDP. It is in these recognitions the government is undertaking a concerted effort to promote the tourist sector by focusing on all tourist circuits, the northern, the southern, and the northwest circuit. For instance, we have recently established three new national parks in the Northwest Circuit, and another one is due to be established in the Southern Circuit. Efforts are also being undertaken to develop beach tourism along the coast of Indian Ocean, with a coastline covering 1,424 kilometers. Measures are also underway to develop sports, culture, and historical tourism. In this regard, we call for investors from South Africa to invest especially in tourist infrastructure, including hotels, camps, transport, and etc., both in the mainlands and Tanzania. Connected to this, I would like to propose to the distinguished participants, if time so permit, please visit some of our tourist attractions. Do not only for the enjoyment, but also for exploring and identifying areas for investment. Your Excellencies, it is clear that South Africa has made great strides in the field of motor assembly. When I came to your country during the inauguration ceremony of my brother, His Excellency Lamaphosa, I was able to see myself the advancement you have attained in motor assembly technology and how you encourage your people to purchase vehicles assembled in South Africa. In fact, I did not see old vehicles causing noise and air pollution on the road, especially for those roads which I used during the time when I was in South Africa. We also invited serious stakeholders or business people from South Africa to establish motor assembly industries in our country. The market is huge and the readily available. Actually, it's really unfair to buy a car thousand kilometers from Dar es Salaam than to buy cars just a few kilometers from South Africa. 
Your Excellency President Lamaphosa Honorable Readers, I have so far pointed out some investment opportunities available in our country. At this juncture, I deem it important to explain very briefly effort being undertaken by the government to create a conducive environment for trade and investment. First and most importantly, the government has established a new ministry specifically responsible for investment under the Prime Minister's office. Secondly, in order to promote industries and investment, we have set export processing zone and a special economic zones. We have further continued to put in place enabling infrastructure, including the implementation of various energy projects in order to reduce the production's cost. One of them is the flagship project of Nyerere Dam in Rufiji Basin, coast regions, which will generate 2,115 megawatts. We have also undertaken to develop transports and transportation infrastructure, including road, air, water, and railway transport. Regarding air transport, we have revamped our national carrier, Air Tanzania. And as you might have witnessed, we have recently established direct flight to South Africa. This direct flight is scheduled four times a week. This arrangement will facilitate not only trade and investment, but also promote tourism between our countries. In line with that, airports are being expanded. I am sure you have seen it. Roads are constructed all over the country. Marine ports are being expanded and a new ship constructed. Most importantly, we are constructing a standard gauge railway covering 1,800 kilometers from Dar es Salaam to Mwanza, Kigoma Regional, and then the railway line will later connect our neighbor in Burundi and Rwanda. Another measures involved the review of our legal and regulatory framework in order to simplify investment procedures and get rid of bureaucracies. We undertake all these measures because our country has its door large open to all investors, both the local and the international. In this connection, I urge all investors not to head to street propaganda that our country is not investors friendly. Those are empty words uttered by individuals with the ill intentions against our nation. This government is a great friend of all investors. Above all, Tanzania is a peaceful country and a politically stable. The investment environment is therefore predictable. Do not be deceived. Your Excellency, President Lamaphosa, honorable readers, distinguished participants, quite often at the end of business fora like this, participants do exchange phone numbers and the other contacts in order to keep in touch. But it is also possible that no concrete actions follow thereafter. In fact, some participants may end up getting girlfriends or boyfriends <laughs> instead of establishing business relations. That said, I do intend to stop you from getting girlfriends and the boyfriends but I just wanted to summarize my message in the following terms. One, your discussion must focus on concrete issues rather than generalities of which no implementation can, have, can be affected. Two, upon the conclusions of the forum, secure business partners and reach some concrete preliminary arrangement. Number three, identify areas of trade and investment and prepare for implementation. Without concrete resolutions and fora for implementation, this forum might not yield intended results. 
after this remark, I wish you a successful forum and a fruitful deliberations for the mutual benefits of our both country and their people.